How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another Dynamic Projectiles video. In the last video we made our rocket bullet type and I kind of forgot to just do the collision altogether because I was really focused on getting this new bullet type out there for you. So in this video we're going to go over the rocket collision. I'm actually kind of happy that we didn't do it because now we're going to add to the rocket collision with an explosion. Then on top of that we're going to also make some other cool impact effects that we were talking about. So if you go to our sound event and we probably should rename this to our collision event eventually but right now this is just playing our sounds for our collisions all i did was i copied and pasted this event so now instead of it being the bullet which collides with the collision object it's the rocket that collides with the collision object and then we're checking to see if our weapon type is equal to bazooka then we're playing the rocket collision audio which you can now download in the description you can download the new version of the project then we're destroying the rocket so as soon as this collides we're playing the audio we're destroying the rocket and then we're going to actually call our screen shake function now the only thing that's different from the screen shake function here and the screen shake function in our weapon type for our bazooka where we're actually spawning our bullet and by the way i added in audio for the rocket which you can also download in the description uh, is our screen shake is actually going to last longer so instead of it being 0.2 seconds it's going to last 0.6 seconds and now what this is going to do is it's going to carry over because you can see the next action is we're going to wait 0.5 seconds and then destroy our particle so our rocket bullet already destroys then we're going to call the screen shake and it's going to play longer than the system is going to wait and then it's going to destroy our rocket and the the reason behind this is because if we go back to our layout and we click on our particle effect you can see that i added a fade behavior to it now i didn't touch any of the the properties to it at all so just add a fade to it and now when i hit play and i switch over my weapon type you can see that it's going to fade out naturally and it's going to fade out smoothly so when i hit x again there we go it fades out nicely when our rocket is destroyed now you'll also notice that there's a little bit of a gap here so when i let me hit the bullet again there's a little bit of a gap when the bullet collides with the wall it's going to spawn well, the particle effect is spawned and pinned to the bullet. And the bullet's going to collide and destroy, and then the particle effect is going to trail and wait. So it's going to be around here when it actually fades out. And it's going to happen quickly, so it, it works. And I'm very happy with this. But we're going to actually cover it up with an explosion. So when our rocket collides, it's also going to spawn an explosion, which will hide any gap between the rocket and the particle effect. So let's do that. So let's make our explosion. Now it's actually really easy to program. We're just going to have to draw it. And for time purposes, I'm not gonna spend time drawing it and whatnot, but I, what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna make it a circle. So here's how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna resize our new sprite because I made a new sprite for it. And I'm gonna make it 64 by 64. And then I'm just gonna color it in like this. Then what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna make a new frame and I'm going to try to get as close to it as possible. No, I'm not. I'm just going to copy and paste it. That would be smarter. So I'm going to hit Control A and then Control C. And then on our new frame, I'm going to hit Control V. And what I'm going to do is I could either fill it in or I could just kind of use the brush again over it. Let's see, something like that. I think I'm going to use the brush again so we don't have to have those borders. Something like that. There we go. So now our explosion is going to be this, and this is what's going to play. Now, you don't have to do a circle at all. This is kind of pretty lazy. You could probably get out and draw a little bit more. You could make it more like an actual explosion for your own game. And I'm going to call this object explosion. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our sound event. And when our bullet collides, before we call the screen shake, we're going to have our, actually, you know what, before the bullet destroys, before our rocket destroys, we're going to actually spawn in our explosion. So let's just say spawn another object. And in this case, we're just going to spawn the explosion. And let's put this right before it destroys. And let's hit play. And let's see how this works. So I'm going to go hit B. I'm going to hit X. Perfect. So now the only problem is 
it didn't actually destroy our explosion effect. So it doesn't really look like an actual explosion. So let's just add that in and let's just add the action for it to destroy or subsequently what we could do is we could just go to our explosion object and we can add to the behaviors. We could just add a fade behavior. And if we hit play and we hit B, let me move this over. There we go. And I actually like that a little bit better because it looks a more, it flows a little bit better. It kind of has the ease in, ease out opacity effect. So now we have our explosion effect. And this should kind of provide an extra oomph to the impact. But since we have our screen shake kind of lapping over, it might not feel that way. So what we could do is we could just kind of add to it. We could say if our explosion is on the screen and then we could call the screen shake function again and make it maybe not for as long, maybe for 0 0.2 and we could just put the magnitude up to 15 because an explosion is supposed to be really impactful. So there we go, man, that was, that was pretty ridiculous. But you know what I mean? You can mess around with stuff like that and you don't have to do it this way where you're waiting to destroy or you have to wait to destroy because otherwise it's gonna look a little bit weird, but you can wait to call the screen shake after. Like you could put this screen shake down to 0 0.2 and then you could call another screen shake or something like that. You have to get creative with it. But now let me actually just turn this magnitude down a little bit and let's actually put this down to, let's put it to 12 and let's put this to one. So now we just have a little bit of an added bonus to our screen shake here. And if we fire our gun, it's pretty ridiculous, but at least you have that extra control. So you can actually start to add that impact. And of course you can add an explosion sound effect, which I need to grab. So let me do that. Okay, so what we have is I've imported three different explosion sound effects, explosion one, explosion two, and explosion three. And this is going to give our explosion just a little bit more of that customizable feel where every single time you create an explosion, it's not always going to be the same sound effect. And you can actually apply this technique to pretty much any audio effect that you kind of want to have a different pattern to. Now this is going to let Construct 2 pick which audio file it's going to play, but at least it's going to be a little bit different. Again, you could probably extrapolate from this and make your own system where you had a specific, like our machine gun, say it's only playing that one sound, you could have it go into a function and pick between different sounds based on a timer or something like that. You could get really in depth with it. But what we're going to do is very simply, we're gonna add the action in our collision for our audio object to play by name. So under general, play by name. And that way it's gonna locate the sounds folder and the audio file in the sounds folder, we're gonna use the construct2 function called choose. So construct2 is going to pick a random value and the random value that it's gonna pick from is going to be the name of the explosion. So explosion one or explosion two or explosion three. And then I'm gonna close off the parentheses and hit okay. And now I'm gonna drag it up here to where I want it to play and I want it to play right after the rocket uh, spawns the explosion. So now it's going to pick which sound to play. It's going to be explosion one, explosion two, explosion three. So every single time our explosion spawns, it's going to be one of those three. So that gives us just a little bit more of a game feel. So when I get our bazooka out and I hit X, cool. So let's actually go back to our screen shake here. Let's disable this. I just wanted to show you this so you had extra control over this. And you could also just, again, reposition this so you don't have the weight. And you could kind of make it so you call the screen shake again, or you called the screen shake beforehand, and maybe you wanted to wait again. Like you could have just a little bit of a screen shake here where maybe it was like for five for 0 0.1 seconds, and then maybe before... Uh, we called the screen shake. We can control click to copy this and we can put tell the system to wait for a second there just so it plays the screen shake and the sound and we got to make sure that it destroys something like that. So it's going to wait, play the screen shake and then it's going to do that. So let's hit play. Let's see how that looks. There you go. So stuff like that. I hope that at this point with watching all my dynamic projectile videos, you're kind of getting the hang of programming this way and you have an idea as to how you can just kind of go on your own and 
pull out stuff like this where maybe you want to try to wait again or something like that. So I'm going to disable this for now and actually I'll leave that in there. I like that. That was cool. So that's going to be our rocket explosion. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a way for our player to actually have a landing effect or a jumping effect. It doesn't matter which, but we're going to make that animation. So let's do that. To make this effect, let's go to our layout. Let's double click and make a new sprite. Let's make it 16 by 16. And let's zoom in and let's draw with our pencil tool our dust effect. Now this is going to be for when our player lands and or jumps. It's up to you. And this is just going to be kind of, you see this in a lot of video games where you just kind of have this effect and you could have different animations play for this effect where the player was jumping or moving so fast that when it lands, it kind of kicks up dirt or kicks up dust. And this is my amazing drawing. I'm gonna to try to make this a little less blocky. And I expect that you'll spend more time on this. So I just kind of want to illustrate my point here as to how this effect would work. There we go, something like this. That's pretty cool. And let's duplicate from the last frame and let's just take the eraser tool and let's start to erase these little points here. Something like this. Kind of trying to take out the big chunks first. That way it kind of looks more like it's fading out. And let's duplicate again. And we can take out some more stuff like that. There we go. That looks pretty good. Mm, take out a line there and duplicate again. And now we're getting to the point where we kind of want not many dots left or not much dust left. So let's get these out of here, something like that. And one more time, we're going to duplicate this. We're going to leave two, and then we're going to duplicate again and get rid of it. So let's put the origin point of this to the bottom because we want to make this spawn from the player, and so we want it to be on the floor. So let's go to the bottom, and then let's say apply to whole animation. So now with the origin point tool selected, let's double check all of the animation frames here, and it's going to look fine. It's going to do this cool little fade out effect at the end. And let's exit out of this, and let's call this our object dust, obj dust. And let's also give this the fade behavior. So it's safe to say that when it comes to doing impact effects, a lot of them are going to play really quickly. So you kind of want to have them fade out because the fade effect is going to make them look fluid. And that's pretty much our common denominator when it comes to making these effects, like an explosion or a dust effect or any other kind of impact effect, particle effect that you do, you're going to want to have the fade behavior involved. So now that we have our dust, let's go to our player event. And right where we jump, actually, you know what? Let's, we don't want to do it where we jump. We want to do it in our player, but we want to do it as an animation trigger. So if we jump or if we are landing. So it's one of the two. It depends on your preference. I'm going to show you both. So if we jump, and we're going to make the other one for if we land, then what we're going to do is we're going to say player spawn our dust object. So let's get object dust, and it should play the animation fine. Same thing for if we land. So now if we hit play and I jump, there we go, just like that. So you can kind of see that when we jump, it's a little bit off, but when we land, it's going to work. That's because it doesn't really get triggered until the last second. And we can mess around with the Y behavior of our dust object here. Like we could immediately set it to the ground. Usually though, I only set it for landed. I just wanted to show it to you that you could mess around with this and you can fix that little gap that's there. But for right now, I am gonna leave it as landed. That way we don't have to deal with that as a bug. But again, just fix the Y. Just set the Y of the dust location down a pixel and you'll be fine. So now when we land, we kind of have this crazy dust effect that kind of goes straight in our face. Maybe I wanna change that a little bit. But now we have our impact effects for our dust and whatnot. Maybe I wanna kind of make this oh if I did that it would change the whole thing so we're gonna leave it the way it is I'm happy with it it looks cool and that's how you do the dust particle kind of effect I know I've had a bunch of students ask me how to do that effect and it's very simple I wish I could draw it a little bit better for you but it's very simple to do as are all of these things you just have to make sure that you're implementing the correct logic for it so I really do hope you enjoyed a lot of this video because it's kind of a fixer-upper video and adding to the impact of the overall 
dynamic projectiles, but we're getting there. We have our bazooka, we have our machine gun, we have our pistol, they all have sounds. Our rockets now when they collide, <laughs> pick from different sounds. So every single time I shoot, and collide, it has a different sound effect. Maybe it picks the same sound effect twice, but it's gonna be different every single time. So now at least we have that involved there. And again, you can get some more control with that. We also have our explosion and we have our dust particle effects. So this is all taking shape. I'm excited to keep doing these videos. I have some more weapon types coming. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below and I'll be sure to answer you. Also make sure you download the latest version of the project if you want to just kind of go through this at your own pace. That is in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.